behind me. Get in the room next to the right. That's all I really want. Hey, uh, all right. You don't mind if we film the loading and unloading of it? Anything right. you want? Anything you want? Appreciate that. Um, I will have a cup of tea if you don't mind, yeah. One sugar. I'm all right, thank you. I've got a drink in there. Yeah, no come on, sugar. This is a bit of a pleasure for us, this. Is it? I've never moved no one's seen. Well, that's only one known of that configuration. Is it? It's, it's got a seat. We see, we call the Osborne Engineering Company. And there, there were no else, it was the Odd Engine Company. He used to make the, now that frame's got a duplex frame. So it doesn't look like a normal bike. Yeah. It tends to articulate. Right. And it's great at speed. Once you get up to 50, it's spot on. Yeah. Below that, it's difficult. A bit fiddly. But I mean, it's also as well you've got a hand change to try to do a hill start. Yeah. And a hand change in three speed box, oh, you've got God, a yeah. clutch in there. Jeez. <laughs> you know, eight hands. So that's, that's that. But I mean, it's, and that engine there is, is a single cylinder side yeah. valve jab engine. Right. And it's the only one known to the VMCC. In fact, in the, in the VMCC register, it's the 80th bike logged in that register. Right. So it's in the first 80. That one now is my brother's bike, which yeah. he got, which he got from one of the few owners, and it was a, a bloke selling it in the shop in the far from here, and it went over the bloke. He, the bloke wanted there, uh, what for me? Bloke, it's sixty-five quid. Mm -hmm. uh, North is so I said sixty. He said North is. So I said my brother, come on. He got the door and the bloke straight over sixty. So he paid sixty quid for that bike. Wow. Uh, and, and it was doing about seven thousand miles from New. It's only doing seventeen thousand now. Wow. You know, and it's it's got the original side panels on. Yeah. Have you been riding it? No, I've never actually ridden it. Um, my, no. brother, my brother had it and they took it a bit and left it in a, in a farm. Yeah. And uh, I kept saying, I come over the bike. No, no, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And he never, he's, he's not kind of mind. Yeah. So I said, well, I'm coming for it. And I went down, I got all the bits, the cylinder head was off, the pistons were all over the shit. Yeah. And I just rebuilt it totally. Wow. Back a speck, totally back a speck. That is gorgeous. Now you're auctioning it off and it makes you sad. It does, but we're at the age now where what, the reason I decided to sell it, the truth, I've got the black shadow there. Yeah. And the black shadow's going to re stand. So you've got to pull the bike back yourself. Yeah. 1000 cc on a re stand. Yeah. That's a bastard. Yeah. So to kick it over, you've got to kick it over on the stand. And you've got to push it off the stand, and the stand pivots. You've got to get the stand back up to the back wheel and screw it on. So there's no centre stand. So I converted it from mag to um, coiling ignition 12 volt. Yeah. To uh, start a drink. Right. But I was here one day by myself. The wife was at the time of the door or something like that, and um, I, dropped, I, I literally dropped the bike. I trapped it in the stand and it went. And I, I just caught it before it hit the deck and I thought, that's the finish. Yeah. Because if that happens somewhere, it could be ruined somewhere, I'd drop it. I mean, it's a too weird. Yeah. Really too weird. No, really. Yeah. So I thought, well, that's it. So I've gone straight to the, to the auction house. I said, look, okay, I think we're selling this. This is really blah, blah, blah. So we went through it all. And I said, and I said this is where we're on. So you've got to say, I've got the two or something. This is where you put them all in together. This is where we do a, do a big, big better deal for you. Yeah. So I did. Amazing. So we are brumming them the bike is one way to get the bikes again. No? And we have build bikes from scratch. I've built bikes from scratch and built trains and all sorts. Oh, yeah. and, uh, Just moved all over the time. I've had to cut some bikes, yeah. Everything would take comes to stage your leg, you think. I'm not gonna ride it and they're standing here. Yeah. Okay, they could probably give them value, but I think these now are probably getting to that value I where it's, it's, it's not going to get much higher. I mean, they, they were 70 grand once they the shadows. They look at 70 grand right now. That's where people put the money in the banks because they thought, oh, they can buy bottles of wine, one wine and all that. Yeah. That's going to be the holders value and all that. Rubbish. No, Rubbish. after a while. It's, it's when the, it's the guys who appreciated those when they were lads. That's they wanted them when they got older. Kids now are age groupers. They just want to know. Yeah. Because he's one of my first pass me test. You know, my first bike I got for to take me test. I was looking for a GM's cap, which was a two stroke, 200cc. It was a big bike because I was a big, big lad at the time. 
little tall lad, and that, and you're in a swimming suit. He did look right old, like a bundle, and he got in the bundle, and I was dragging through. Yeah. So he was capable, but I couldn't get one, so I ended up getting an aerial leader. What a pile of crap. <laughs> I, bought it, I bought it in the dark. You never buy bikes in the dark. No, or anything in the dark. I bought it in the dark, and this bike was a pain in the ass. I had cord ignition. And it used to used to just run on the battery, and it wouldn't charge the battery. So right. I, I, I remember once pushing it about six miles home, <laughs> you know. And, but, but what it was is a thing we call a zener diode, and it was two bits of tin separated by an air gap, and like a thing like a diode. Yeah. And the place had a level problem. Right. So after that, I bought a I bought a non single five hundred from a guy who would suit his son's bike. That bike never let me down. Ever. Yeah. And what I was using that to build a train. Mm. They got married. Yeah. It's funny how that happens, all the bikes disappear. So so Why well, you don't seem to be doing too bad with your toys? So I had classic cars. <laughs> yeah. I had classic cars. I had, um, I bought an MG, 1950 MG saloon, that for 45 quid. And then I went into O'Reilly, the soft top Riley, you know, the big one, the big yeah. wooden ones. And I, I had that till I got married. Then I got married and I got a coupe, I changed over, I got a company car. And after that, it's just the bikes are in the back world. Yeah. And then back in 94, I bought that one back, that cord in 94. And I bought that one then in 2006. That was a cord. So yeah. this is doing the brakes on. Um, yeah. So I mean, they're, they're just unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, that one on the left there is um, a right hand drive, British import from 1939. And in when you right hand drive, yeah. Cars about not a car mm. and that's just rare. It's a big old motor. Yeah. It's as big as rocky horses, actually. Yeah. I'm guessing that's an R8. That's got R8 written on it. That's it. That's my toy. Who doesn't get a lot of miles? Oh! That is a, a, a V8, 4 4 and a half V8, 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 yeah, so it's just a flat. And there's a panel goes on there, and you screw the panel. And this actually disappears into the boot. There's a flat lid lifts yeah. up. You, dis you hide the boot, you hide the lid. And the, the window and the lights, you know, it's the lights wind out. People think the Lotus was the first thing they'll wind up lights in the world. I mean, that's, this is 1937, 36. How are they hidden? I mean, they were landing lights reused from a Stinson aeroplane, which is a very Stinson. Because the guy who owned the company, he held code. He would also own Stinson aircraft, aircraft. He used to do the, the Royal Mail runs, the air mail runs in America. And then he bought New York shipyard. So this guy was a really entrepreneur. And then somebody made death threats against him, so he moved to England. <laughs> <laughs> that is so gangster. That's wonderful, that. He really, that is gangster. You can never imagine something with like Tommy guns. I mean, the that Al Capone's boot keep I don't know. Yeah. yeah. This front, front wheel drive as well by the way. Yeah. I mean front wheel drive you think I was the first one in the room when yeah. these, these were getting on. Oh yeah. And this this one here is the first the first cord type. And this is a gangster car. <laughs> oh wow Gangster car. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Just look at the size of it. It's a two-seater. It's a two-seater. <laughs> and guess what that's for? That door. Any idea? This? Yeah. Um, I would just rough guess I've set luggage, but. Golf clubs. Oh god, for <laughs> that sense. It's got twin side mounts. Yeah. And it's got a straight eight. Straight there, five litre side valve. And this, this is amazing by itself. This one. People are amazing to see this thing. That's, oh, a, that's an engine. It's like out of a plane. That's an engine. 
Well, the French used yeah, they were built by light chroming. Were they? Light chroming built airplane engines and helicopter engines. Yeah. They still do. Oh, it's so tiny as well. Have you restored it? No, I bought it like this. Like but this. I put it up made that the brakes. I bought it in 2006. Yeah. And I've never had it on the road. And I decided the brakes were stuck on. So I tried to force the brakes in the master cylinder leaks. I thought, well, I'll replace the master cylinder, get re and all that. Did that, and then I went down to the wheels, and the, you've seen nothing like the brake cylinders. You've seen nothing like the shit on them, it was unbelievable. So I took them all off, and they're all re sleeved, rebuilt, re came in plated, and they're on there now. So I'm now debating out the pipes, yeah. which I don't think they'd be dirty, or, or remake them. I just don't know. Mm. Well, this front wheel drive, it changed gear. That's the gear lever. Goes along there through these pulleys oh, and it like yeah. stirs the it's like porridge stirrer. It's, it does what? It's that's how you change the gear. It's called a the a porridge, oh, it's called a porridge, porridge, porridge stirrer. Right. Because when you change gear, you know, do you remember Citroens had a centre the centre dashboard gear change? Like the Citroens, the guest top were used during the war. You know, you ever seen these guest top films with a big massive V on the front, the big massive low car? I've seen them. Well, in the middle yeah. of the dashboard, and even even later in the sixties, those cars had it in the middle of the dashboard. You you change the gear like that. Yeah, and that's what this is. Wow, with that one there. Seriously, that's so, so someone restored this before you, or this is original condition? This, this is someone. This was restored because I, I got to a stage where I thought I'm not going to spend thousands of pounds restoring cars yeah. and not get me money back. Yeah, because it's labour love, isn't it? Where I can buy this year, I bought an auction actually down in London. This one, and um, with that one there. With that one there, um, changes gears. And I think of a Bendix washing machine people, electric hand. Right. And you change gear by a little thing on the end of the common name puzzle, a little lever, first time to open. It's a pre selector, so what you've got to do, you pre select. You cast the room first to change gear. You pre select the gear, put the clutch in. The clutch operates on a clutch switch. Which works in the vacuum from the create from the engine to get the, the gear stick lever to move side to side or front and back. If a wire snaps, you just don't change gear. Yeah, you're in that <laughs> gear don't for good. Gear. Until you in get second home. ever. Wow. Now this one here, I got it was white. It was the wrong colour. Yeah. I knew it was the wrong colour because I found a panel of the right colour. This is called cigarette cream. Right. Because in the old gangster movies and the old speakeasies, they used to smoke. Everything was yellow with the nicotine. Yeah. So this is called cigarette cream. Right. This is the right colour for the car. Everything on this car is right. Exactly as it was as it left the factory. It's gorgeous. And, um, and it's, it's just a showstopper. Mm. Everywhere you go. You've been out driving, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I took us down to Newbury to New Hall and all these places around there. I went to a great deal of distance because the guy who bought it was a doctor. And in 1937, obviously, they were, they were selling them in London, but they couldn't sell them because they couldn't get busted. Mm. So it was put around the corner of another dealers who had it till 1939. And they sold to a doctor called Dr. Sim from Leicester. And he took it back to, to Leicester, so it would be. Mm. And um, something happened during the war, wherever, because it ended up after the war being painted black. But he used to take it to the south of France in the early 50s. He says, he says it was a great car. He says, but the biggest thing was you get it towed back home. <laughs> Because no one knew how to work on this. You were sitting getting towed to back, mm. and I've actually got a car, in, a picture of a car in 1939 with badges on the front. It has like two, two French motor clubs, badges on the front. Yeah. I've got the pictures. I know exactly where this car's been for the day it was made. Yeah. In fact, when I was going to bore the people. No, carry when, on. When, when the car was after the war, the Americans were based in Bryce Norton and all these Air Force bases, over here and all that down in Lincolnshire and all these places. And there was a Captain Goringer. Now, Captain Goringer was born in a town called Connorsville, where they used to build these in Indiana, Connorsville, and he wanted a cord. And there was a few in England, but the, 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 they were orphaned cars, nobody wanted to know about them. So he found this one down in Bournemouth, in South, South Bournemouth, and he, and he bought it. He got a, a, hood, a hood thrown in. He flew back from Bryce Norton on a bomber, on a, B4, on a B-57 bomber, back to the town. And on this plane there was two convicts and there was all sorts of things on this plane. 
in back in Indiana and he kept it for a couple of years and he sold it and went around the state. Mm. But the thing about it, when Goringa uh, had it, he worked for a company called the Roots, Roots Blowers that make, they make big blows for engines to get, so it's like a turbocharger for mm. commercial engines. A supercharger. It is. And uh, it's on the front of this magazine, on this, on this blow magazine, it's on there. Mm. And um, so he, as I say, he bought this car and he took it back to the States to yeah. the town where it's built. Then, after a few years, the prices of the cars went through the roof and Coys at the time were the big, were the big dealers. They had bought it in, it had gone down to somewhere like, somewhere in the States, Wyoming or somewhere. And they bought it, they got it back to England, thought it was going to make loads of money at the auctions, and it didn't. And it was, and it was sold to an, Amer to an Australian architect whose idea was to run the car in England for a year and then take it out to Australia. But unfortunately, he was an architect and he did a lot of work in Japan. And the business went to it's up in Japan, so we ended up having to sell the car. And mm. I got it for a really good price. Wow. And they wanted to buy it back. And I went, listen, I'm sorry. Yeah. That one there, yeah. well, I bought this one here, guys. The guy goes, up and says, leave the car here and give you 10 grand. On top of your plate, I said, I've got 10 grand. Yeah. That's a whole lot of car. I've even That's made, I've even made these in glass. I've had them, I've had the moulds made and I've had them cast in glass. Yeah. And I've sold them to the Yanks <laughs> for two hundred and fifty dollars each. Oh, nice. So, amazing. That's this. That is amazing. And that is just a two seater. That yeah. is two huge. And if you look, there's a thing in the back of a diggy. Where a diggy is. It's, it's like a flip out seat. Yeah, it's called the Americans call it a mother in law seat. Yeah. You put the mother in law in there so she can get this. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so that's in the back, and so it's basically, it's basically it can be a four seater, but the ones in the back sit outside. Yeah. But uh, I mean, if you look here, the detail there, on there, it's like, it's like flared there. Mm. It's the same thing's flared there. Yeah. So the radiator's flared, all, they all follow the same flare. Yeah. This, it's this, all black thing, this, this thing in the wing, mm -hmm. and everything again. Oh, I've even remade stop and handles. I mean, we had a starting handle because it's a different type of handle than a normal car, and I managed to borrow one and I've actually made, actually made one. You said that's an eight cylinder? Eight cylinder. How can you start an eight cylinder car with a starting handle? With, with a six volt battery. It's a six volt <laughs> battery as well. Oh, God. So, why did I put an electric pedal pump on? Because you try and suck pedal to a mechanical pedal pump on a six volt. Oh, yeah. That yeah, pulls your boots out. So, is it like, is it a starter assisted by your starting handle? No, 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 it's a starter. It's just a push start. That, that's, that's, that's to try and start it. That's right. to turn the engine over. That one there doesn't have one. Right. Didn't have either one. Yeah. What wow. you do there, that one breaks down, you take the badge off and you poke around with a screwdriver to try and get a gear manually. Right. And get all the way down. It'll pull away on top. That it'll pull away on top. Will it? And it'll pump start. And we will run all day. Got lots of torque. Lots mm -hmm. of torque. You can see that you saw that on the front wheel, front wheel drive shafts. Yeah. That's front wheel as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh god yeah. And all, all, all the buttons and all that, it's unbelievable. Wow yeah. I never realised that. I've never actually seen because that's like, it's not even a kingpin is it? It's like it's a like, dual it's, it's, kingpin. It's, 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 like, it's like a CV joint. Mm. That's impressive engineering. What do you think Connor? Mm. There's also a thing in the world which is not wired up, it's on the exhaust, it's a ten, but a ten and couldn't be exhaust. When you're in the town, you have this knob down. When you're in a cubby, you just straight through exhaust. Right. Get the noise. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in the floor as well. But I've, I've, I've looked to drive it, but the mechanics are the heart attack. So he. Oh, because of that? No, no. <laughs> he's like, he's not actually working on this. But I'm going to try and find something else again because I'm getting on a bit now. And I don't know. Under these cars here, it's a pain. I know. Yeah. I mean, you come out and you think, oh, crazy. I know, I'm still crying. I'm glad I've been under it today. I'm going break on it. So, yeah, no, you, you get you get sick. Yeah. So I'm an age now where I'm having to reevaluate and think. Mm. Do I but insane. If you come across any bikes for sale, you let me know. Yeah. yeah. You come across yeah. classics quite a lot. Because I mean, um, the one I want really on an American one called a Henderson Henderson KJ, which is what the um, American cops used to use. Mm. The handlebars used to come right straight back to the city. Yeah. Like two headlamps on the bumpers. Only ever moved one Henderson. Henderson. It's called a Henderson KJ. Yeah. 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 Suicide shift. Uh, Touch on the wrong side of the oh, Great. I look really. The things I buy, I don't buy real middle stuff, I buy stuff which is difficult. Yeah. Because yeah, you can't get much more different than that. That's amazing. 
I'd love to see that one down the road. That one there was supposed to be photographed in existence somewhere with the Beatles in it. Yeah. When it was in the States. Now I've tried everywhere. I've got the envelope. I've got the letter from the woman who says encloses the photograph show the Beatles, they are not shrubby like they are today. Yeah. So I've worked out where they were in 64, 65. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't the Beatles, it was someone else. Yeah. It was the Stones, it was the Gardens, it was the Kings, it was the Stones, it was the Gardens, 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 it was the that's an indicator. I, that. oh, no, I, I, oh, right. indi I used those indicators, but then I bought yeah. some motorbike ones and converted them. Yeah. And they work just as well. That's outstanding. So what we're going to do, I'm going to load the bags or do it, or what? Or yeah, get a cup well. of tea first, or what? Or? Um, well, I can load the, load the bags while I'll make a coffee if you want. Right. Let's have a quick look at this as well. And this you've one got to soak them in, you've got to appreciate them. I never used to be a big fan of classics. Yeah, well, I didn't, you know, before I started doing this job, about, probably about 12, 13 years ago. Plumber's Nightmares. Yeah, the Plumber's Nightmares. The only difference this car from the only thing that's on this car is not correct. Coiling machine, which I've got all the bits that are going with you to take to go with the bike. Yeah. And the carburetors, the carburetors were under carburetors with remote float chambers, and there's a left hand and a right hand with the rubber crap. So people convert them to this type of concentrics. Right. The purists don't like that. Mm. Well, that's a stand I'll show you about. You've got to pull it back and not stand. Oh, I can imagine. And, and there's, but there is two side, there's two side prop stands. Mm. There's a, you know, one, one each side. Right. Um, oh, so they've got one on, this, one on this side as well? That's one on this side as well, because you can basically take the front wheel out mm. by propping up on those two, two on sets two. of stands. Yeah. At the end of a curve, you can just pull the wheel out. <laughs> that one they can pull the wheel out by putting it on the back. Yeah. And, it, and everything just hinges up. Put the wheels in, but I mean, th these were fortune, these were made. Oh, yeah, they were five and a quid. We were just we were just talking on way, on way up here, weren't we? About uh, Hammond did a the top gear, did one, didn't they? Yeah, when Hammond rode one of these, yeah. Yeah. the South Ring went up to Scotland. I mean, they the, 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 the do 120 now. Oh, yeah, they're rapid. Wow, in fact, there's one called the Rapide, which is like the, the Cuban. This is the Black Shadow, because it's yeah. you can tell the Black Crank cases. The, uh, the repeat is it was, it was just a cooking going 10 yeah. miles an hour slow. Yeah. Well, I mean, this must have been totally rebuilt. Beautiful bike. That one has been totally rebuilt from everything. Yeah. Everything like that. I even got back. This bike here was owned by a man and a man and wife in Newcastle, and she had a, a, a Comet as a 500 version of this. Mm -hmm. Everything's the same, but it's a 500 engine. It's basically half that. Yeah. And um, for some reason, they took the most of the bits of the, this engine ended up in the common frame, if you like. And that one, so I had a long boot, which didn't tell you, but I thought, well, this is going to go there with a bomb for try to sell it. So, uh, funny enough, I found a guy from the Vincent Club who had the correct frame, mm -hmm. swinging arm for this, and I was able to go down to BDL on a Saturday morning and do a swap with him because he wanted mine. Yeah. So, this bike now is just full numbers. Much much yeah. And you say you've got the original parts, carbs in it? I've got the carbs, I've got the dynamo Yeah. So the original stuff to bring back to the original yeah. six volt. Yeah. Mm. Well, even, yeah. Why would you? Well, that's six volt. I mean, this starts on this starts on second kick on my dynamo. Ever. Ever. You've got to decompress the valves, you've got to put this, these two choke rings in the right place, mm. the battery target. Pain the ass. <laughs> That there starts dead easy. Yeah. Oh, man. The, the what size engine is that? Five, oh, they're 500. Are oh, they 500? Yeah. Looks a lot smaller than 500. Just there you go. Right. right. Let's get them loaded up.
to transport some classic bikes to Ian Cunningham from H&H &H Auctions who are having an auction tomorrow at the NEC in Birmingham. So Ian, what have we got here? Well, there's two bikes here coming from the same vendor. First one, 1930s OEC. Uh, classic single cylinder British bike from that era. Jap engine like everybody seemed to use back then. The fascinating thing about this one is the suspension, uh, which in its day, even now, is unusual. If you look at the front end and the way it all works, got this sort of parallel idea almost of how it all sort of hinges and pivots. Uh -huh. Vendor said it's incredibly stable. It's one of them bikes, once you're going in a straight line, it's just, you can take your hands off, it's that good. Obviously back then they were thinking of all sorts of clever ideas of how to have suspension. We now have two Pogo sticks on the front that tend to work fairly well, but this was one way around it, didn't catch on. Similar with the back end, that's got a sort of swinging arm back end on it with long dampers going up and down here and pivoting more or less right up here at the front of the engine. So that's one way around it. Uh, same vendor had this Vince of Black Shadow. So Black Shadow, one of the classic bikes from that era, 1950s. Made famous by Richard Hammond, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah, let's say that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't count him, he's a car man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Black Shadow were the bike that he's still, he's still very desirable now. Their idea was again a different front fork, like a gird fork almost. So a big aluminium casting with the dampers here. And again, you know, a little bit more complicated than it perhaps needs to be. Uh, one advantage with this was you could alter the geometry of it. So if you had a side car, you flipped it round and you altered the geometry. So it fitted the side car better. Uh, obviously back in the day, people put side cars on bikes, so it was worth doing that. It was a family transport, wasn't it? Back end. 
again, before it's time, can't leave without suspension. You can't say mono shot because there's actually two dampers, but <laughs> it was in effect a single shot back end. Uh, again, in its day, way ahead of its time. I suppose the glory there it was that the seat is actually passing through the swinging arm on these on these models. So and that that goes up and down. Like if you sat on the back, that's going up and down with the suspension. As well. So it won't quite what they should be. But this in its day would have been the fastest bike you could buy. Probably one of the dearest bikes you could buy as well. So you know, if you had a black shadow, you were the only man in town who had one. And we probably you were probably a doctor or a barrister or something like that. Fantastic. You know. So yeah, very desirable bike. Uh, still command really good prices, hopefully tomorrow in the auction.